to the WB Thursday. Tonight, it's finally here. The big one-hour premiere of the new WB comedy, Family Affair. New York's finest butler, because nothing rattles him, except these three new arrivals. This would be a great place for a party. There's been a small incident. Gary Cole and Tim Curry as Mr. French. The WB Comedy Premiere Family Affair. Plus, during Family Affair, you'll see the WB exclusive world premiere preview of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. But right now, the WB presents Family Affair. Sydney. Good trip, Mr. Davis. Sid, we are going to build a bridge across the Yangtze River. 3,000 feet of gleaming steel are going to connect the peoples of the Sichuan Basin with the urban centers of eastern China. It's about time. <laughs> I can open the door myself. Well, of course you can, sir. But really, how would it look? It was a successful trip. Oh, yeah. On the plane coming back, I sat next to this amazing woman who was incredibly single. No, sir. I was speaking to the reason you were on the plane. Bridge, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Great bridge. Tuesday at 3, you have a trustees meeting at New York University. Wednesday evening is dinner with Miss Wagner. Oh, I forgot. Um, your sister from Indiana called yesterday. Jenny, I just talked to her last week. What did she want? Presumably to talk to you this week. <laughs> I'll give her a call tomorrow. Listen, I'm having company for dinner tonight. The amazing lady from the airplane. It's the one. Wait till you see her French. Long, silky hair, high cheekbones. Wears these shiny leather pants that looks like she was dipped in them from which we would conclude that she's a model. And you would be as wrong as wrong can be. She's an ex-model. <laughs> Don't they call them recovering models? Right. It just so happens that she created a company. She designs and markets her own line of lingerie in which I might invest. So it's a legitimate business dinner. I'll prepare the usual make-out menu. Would you? <laughs> Someday, when I'm off the road, I didn't know anybody had a butler anymore. What does he do all day? Whatever needs doing. <sighs> Seems kind of excessive. That's what appealed to me. <laughs> Mr. Laney. Thank you. Sir? Excuse me. So you're in the city to debut your new line? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that, because a lot of guys don't care that much about women in lingerie, but I, I, I think that's just wrong. <laughs> Good evening. Oh, hello, Mr. French. I don't know if you remember me. I'm Jenny Heiger. Bill's sister. Oh, yes. We spoke on the phone a few days ago. You were in Indiana, a whole different time zone. I suppose it must be a bit of a surprise. Is Bill home? Unfortunately, he's engaged at the moment. Perhaps you could come back tomorrow? Mrs. Beasley needs to use the party. 
And who is Mrs. Beasley? I have to go with her so she doesn't get scared. <laughs> Won't you come in? If you would kindly follow me. Julie, go ahead. up on the engineering completely, but there's a mesh of wire that wraps around and pushes everything up and in. Does that make sense? Well, sure. It sounds like a basic suspension support system. If you want, I can take it apart later and explain how it works. <laughs> I'm so sorry, sir. May I speak to you for a moment? Don't go anywhere. Your sister Jenny is here to see you. Here? Now? Yes, sir. Oddly, now. Did she tell you that she was coming to New York? She did not. It seems this is a delightful surprise. Surprise. <laughs> Jenny? Hi. I didn't know you were in the city. Well, I called, but you were in China, so we just came to see you. By we, you mean... Puffy, Jody, this is your Uncle Bill. <sighs> wow, look who's here, the twins. Did you really kill a man for dawdling on the way to the bathroom? <laughs> oh, who knows where they picked these things up, sir? <clears throat> Bill, you and I need to talk. Where's our room? Yeah, yeah, we need to talk. French, would you excuse us for a few minutes? And we're all pretending we didn't hear the child use the phrase, our room. <laughs> Just, uh, entertain our two young guests. What about Miss Delaney? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Take the kids out there with her. Maybe she'd like to play with them. Oh, I doubt that very much, sir. <laughs> and yet I'm sure it'll be a great success. Young persons, would you be so good as to come with me? Mrs. Beasley doesn't like high places. Oh, well, you are welcome to leave your little dolly here. She's not a doll. She's my friend. Oh, my apologies. You may leave your insensate, fiber-filled friend here. She's a real person. In that you are deluding yourself. What does that mean? It means that you have constructed an imaginary ethos with the specific intent of avoiding reality. You're beginning to annoy Mrs. Beasley. You don't want to do that. Oh, isn't this fun? Miss Delaney, may I present Miss Buffy and Master Jody from Terra Oat. I don't understand. Neither do I, but, um, we carry on. <laughs> May I offer you something delicious to eat? What's that? Well, these are artichoke hearts with goat cheese, and these are Greek olives. Nope. <laughs> Very well. How come you're so skinny? <clears throat> When Tim and Laura died, you promised that at some point you'd take the kids. At some point? That's the key phrase here. At some point in the future to be mutually agreed upon. Come on, you and Doug are dream parents. 
You've got the house with the yard and the dog and the school down the lane and... We're selling the house. No, no, you can't sell the house. You can't do that to, to them. Listen, I love those kids, but this is about my marriage. Doug and I have done our time raising kids, and I promised him years ago that when our boys were grown, we would get out of the mortgage, buy a camper, and see the country. We've been counting on you. See, that's where you went wrong. You counted on me. Oh, okay. Madam, may I be of assistance? Tell Bill to call me some night when he doesn't have kids. And good luck with them. But I... I... Oh. Play with the big hat. Boom. <laughs> Please fit on the bicycle. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Bold guy with the briefcase. Boom. Oh, dear heavens. Get me the oh. Uh-oh. You got the bus. You win. So sorry. Terribly sorry. Little, um, accident. <laughs> we're, we're... You. Oh, dear. You. Sit there. Don't move. Both of you. Don't let him get me! Who? The doorman! Who's the doorman? Excuse me, sir. Madam, have you seen the young master? French, why does he think you're going to kill him? We disagreed over the disposition of the hors d'oeuvre. Uh, I thought the olives should be eaten. The young master thought they should be hurled like missiles onto unsuspecting passers-by. Yeah, well, you dropped the plate. He hit a bus. It stopped, and everybody looked up at us. Yes, we've had quite the jolly time. Oh, that'll be Doug. He's with the realtor. Hi. Yeah? He found a buyer for the house. Never take the first offer. Jody, Jody, come see. I found our room. Yay! <sighs> Sir, this expression, our room, keeps popping up. I find it quite disturbing. Hey, don't worry. She's just confused. People have been telling her things that other people didn't agree to, which I'm going to straighten out. Oh, excellent, sir. I'm at them. Oh, and listen, tell Miss Delaney... Long that... gone, sir. Didn't take to the kids, huh? Like a duck to lava. <laughs> yeah, I like that about her. This is Uncle Bill's room. He's got the guard and a painting of a naked lady and a closet that you can walk into that has a million sweaters. This is the doorman's room. He's got eight pairs of black shoes and they're all lined up like soldiers' feet. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and this is our room. How do you know? Mrs. Beasley told me. Hmm. Ah, testing the bed springs. Yeah, I was hoping to do that myself a little later, but not to be. <laughs> Listen, I just need to talk to you guys a minute. Your Aunt Jenny said that she told you that you'd be staying here a while? Yeah! No, 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 no. Hold the yay. It's not as simple as that, okay? Catch me! What? No. Catch me now! No, no. No more catching. No more jumping. We're gonna play a different game called Listen to Uncle Bill. And there's only one rule, okay? No one's allowed to talk but me. Why? You lose. I didn't know we were starting. You lose again. You're really bad at this. Stop it! I mean, stop it, okay? Now, there is a little problem with you guys staying here. Aunt Jenny said you don't have any kids, so you got openings. Yeah, yeah, I don't have kids, but I also don't have a wife. I bet you could get one with a place like this. Maybe. But the point is, I don't have a wife right now. What about the skinny lady out on the deck? You could ask her. I don't want to ask her. I bet you say yes. Aunt Jenny says you're loaded. You just need to grow up. Yeah. But, madam, we have a style of life that is inimical to the well-being of young children. 
Yes, so did I before I had kids. You'll do fine. You'd leave them here without a change of clothes. <gasps> here you go. I put in plenty of ointment for Jody's rash. But aren't you even going to say goodbye? Goodbye. Not to me. To Biffy and Thingy. <laughs> Oh, I hope she packed their leashes. You know, kids, it still feels like we're really far apart here. So, uh, all right, so let's do this. You and your Aunt Jenny can camp here tonight, and then in the morning, we'll revisit the issue with fresh eyes. Okay? She left? That's two women in one night. Stop letting women out. <laughs> These came with the children, sir. I assume they're filled with frogs and slingshots and the like. Yeah. Well, see if there's some pajamas in there. Yes, sir. I need a drink. That's what Uncle Doug always said. Don't forget the WB exclusive WB Monday night. Excuse me. I I'm terribly sorry. I <laughs> Morning, Fresh. Morning, sir. <clears throat> Little girl in the bathroom, sir. Ah. Sir, I wonder, how long do little girls take? Well, if they're anything like big girls, better pull up a chair. Oh. Oh. <laughs> For you, young miss. For you, young master. It's all right. It's one of yours. See? Colorful elfin character cavorting merrily across huge mounds of sugar. <laughs> I called the grocery this morning and asked them to send up the cereal that I would find the most horrifying. They were more than up to the task. Well, looks like you've got this under control. Well, thank you very much, sir. <laughs> sir? You're going to your office? Well, French, I have to let everyone know about the big bridge we're going to build. Well, yes, sir, naturally, but the children. <laughs> Listen, this is all just temporary. I'm going to call my sister later on today and tell her that the kids have to go back. But she was rather dead set against that last night, sir. That is why I always have Plan B. And if Plan B doesn't work, feel free to go as deep into the alphabet as required, sir. I have another sister in Ohio, Lucy. Ohio? Capital spot for children. And there's several rivers and mountain ranges between here and there. Yeah, Jody and Buffy's older sister, Sissy, lives there. She seems to like it. Oh, you can reunite the siblings. Exactly. Kids belong together. Uh, in the meantime, just look after them. But, sir... I haven't the foggiest idea. Go to the park, buy him a hot dog, look at other people with children and do what they do. French, we got a couple of cute six-year-olds dumped on us. Nobody's happy about that, but don't worry. Together, we'll get through this. I may be late tonight. Oh, Mrs. Summers, excellent. You're a member of the child care profession. Do they require any special protective equipment for this kind of unregulated 
sand play. No, no, you just let them go. Yay! You have a great deal to learn about children. I also have a great deal to learn about wolves and dirigibles and little interest in learning it. So, how long do you estimate they're good for? At their age, probably an hour. Oh, marvelous. I'm Mr. French. You don't need to sit over there by yourself. You're welcome to join our group. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I'm sure you all have fascinating nanny business to transact. And I would be, shall we say, suicidal. Now, you know you don't mean that. Now, come on. You're just a shy bachelor among so many pretty women. <laughs> Mrs. Lavich, Mrs. Knowlton, this is Mr. French, who seems to have been enlisted as a nanny today. Oh, and uh, how old are your two charges, Mr. French? I understand them to be six in child years, but they're not my charges. Mr. French! Mr. French! Yes, child. What is it? Those two red-headed boys on top, and they say we can't climb up because it's their castle and we're not allowed on. Now, now. Share and share alike. We must all be good citizens. Cram it! Rico! Do these troublemakers belong to any of you, ladies? No. I shall summon the police. Mr. French, they're seven years old. Very well. I shall mediate. Come along, children. You there! You and your thuggish brother! <laughs> you are not to forbid others to climb wherever they wish. It's our castle, and nobody can come up! In that, you are quite mistaken, you little gangster. This edifice belongs to the citizens of New York. These children are the niece and nephew of Mr. William Davis of Hartwell Newberry Industries, who jolly well pays his taxes. And they are therefore richly entitled to ascend to whatever part of this ridiculous structure they desire. You little monsters! Go get him, Mr. Fred! Go get him, Dormant! 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 Oh, sweet mother of God! <sighs> My spine. He dropped just like an olive. Keep watching the WB exclusive draw thing. And how long will they be there? We haven't pinned that down yet. So the killer that I hired right out of grad school, the bridge builder, the deal maker, that that guy couldn't dust a couple of muppets. They're my brother's kids. They're cute. Big eyes. Oh, yeah, the big eyes will get you. You know, believe me, this is not the direction I saw my life going. Look, I don't want to cross a line here and tell you what to do, but you're crazy if you don't send them to boarding school. They have those for six-year-olds? Absolutely. There's one right outside the city that I'm pretty sure my kids go to. Do they like it? They love it. And while they're loving it, they're out of my hair. Sounds good. It is good. So, who's uh, looking after the little tykes today? Oh, I left him with French. He can handle anything. Is your back broken? No, my back is not broken. It is pulverized. Do you want us to do anything? I want you to do nothing. You bring enduring misery to everything you touch. <laughs> I am going to soak in a hot bath and see if sensation returns to my legs. If I'm lucky, <laughs> perhaps I'll drown! He's not really gonna die, is he? Maybe we can make him feel better before Uncle Bill gets home. We can make him something to eat. Something healthy. Soup! Yeah! I bet I know where it is. What do we do now? 
don't know. Aunt Jenny always pushed a lot of buttons. We're going to need a contract with a number of Chinese suppliers for steel and titanium. Yeah. Mr. Davis, Mr. French is calling. He says you need to come right home. Then he has a real good reason for that? He says there's been a small fire in the apartment. It could have been in boarding school hours ago, if you'd listen to me. <laughs> This is Mr. Davis. Everything's been contained, sir. It's all right. What happened? The microwave oven overloaded and started an electric fire that burned a few feet of counter and put out a lot of smoke. Your uh, queen bay soups will do that. <laughs> it must have been the children, sir. Where are they? I've looked everywhere, sir. They're not in the apartment. <sighs> Great. Now they leave. I'm afraid not, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What the hell happened to you? I was muscled off a climbing structure by a pair of grade school hoodlums. Unbelievable. I spent the morning trying to figure out how to get rid of them and the whole afternoon trying to get them back. I'm sorry I lost them, sir. It's not your fault, French. Well, yes, it is. I should be prohibited by the government from further handling of children. <sighs> Look, we're both lousy parents. We have no idea how to take care of kids. They need to be somewhere they're safe, and I'm not worrying myself to death about it. And if that's boarding school, then so be it. It would seem to be prudent, sir. What I'm trying to find out, Sergeant, is how many men are currently looking, because it's going to get dark in another hour, and, and those two little children need to be found before that happens. Hey, Mr. French! Wow, you look exactly the same. Exactly the same as what? As when I was here five years ago on vacation. I'm Sigourney. Remember? Oh, good Lord, yes. I thought you were called Sissy. Oh, yeah, well, that's what the twins call me. We all went to Coney Island. You threw up all over me. Yeah! What was it, three chili dogs? It seemed like ever so many more. <laughs> I promise I won't do it this time. So, I hear my brother and sister are living with you guys. French! They want to know if you're sure that she had on a blue sweatshirt. Hey, they just want a full... description. Sissy? Uncle Bill! <laughs> With luggage on her back. Oh, yeah. I could live out of this thing for years. <sighs> this is gonna be so great. Let's try not to lose this one, sir. <laughs> Catch a special Friday presentation of Family Affair tomorrow on the WB. Week on the WB Monday. Wow. You know how you see something when you're really little and you come back years later and it looks so much smaller? Oh, this place looks so much bigger. Sissy, how did you get here? Bus, the whole way I sat next to this fantastic guy who plays guitar and writes music. Sort of friendly Dave Matthews, Ryan Adams things. And I write poetry and sing, so we are going to collaborate. His name's Destin. Like, Destiny, isn't that perfect? Oh, and he's coming over tonight. Is that okay? Whoa, whoa, honey. 
What are you doing here? Everything. Take a look at this. It's called The Pulse, and it's got listings of hundreds of clubs you can go on stage on the crummy nights and perform your own material. There's one tonight in Tribeca. Where's that? Honey, does your Aunt Lucy know that you're here? Oh, yeah. I mean, well, she doesn't know I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> I figured she'd probably take that better coming from you. Anyway, when I talked to Aunt Jenny, she told me she was bringing the runs to live with you. And I asked her if I could come and live with you, too. And she said, well, she didn't see why not. And this is going to be so great because I haven't seen the twins in months. And they love me because I am a terrific babysitter. I'm a champ at hide-and-seek. Good. Maybe you can pass along some tips to the search party. Your brother and sister ran off. Oh, they used to do that all the time. No big deal. Well, they do. Blow something up? Yeah, this is their work, all right. I can tell. Uh, why don't you sit down and French will get you something to eat. I'm gonna go back out and look, I don't know, somewhere. You're wasting your time. Did you look behind stuff? They can fit anywhere they can get their heads into. Well, we know they're not hiding in the microwave. <laughs> they'll turn up, I'm telling you. Honey, I can't just sit here. As long as they're under my roof, those kids are my responsibility. That is so weird. You know, when you're worried, you look just like my dad. Come on, I'll find him for you. Such a good thing going here. You know, you ought to put breakable stuff like that in storage. I mean, now they got the runs living with you. They're not living with me, they're just visiting. If I can find them. But Aunt Jenny said... Aunt Jenny just showed up, okay? And then she dumped them here. I wasn't consulted at any point. So they're not staying because, as you can see, this is not such a safe place for them to be. Okay. And I guess you can leave the lamp where it is. Nowhere is this my fault! <laughs> Come on, that's the first place we looked. It doesn't hurt to look again. Sometimes they move around. look there, too. Shh, quiet. I'm listening. Sometimes you can hear them drool. <laughs> Ow! Quiet! May I present to you the amazing... went so we called me in all the way from Ohio to come and find you we were just in the closet yeah we were gonna come out when we ran out of fig newtons are you mad you bet I'm mad I don't enjoy getting called out of meetings and finding firemen in my kitchen but I don't understand why did you hide from me we didn't want to get sent away again Tell you what, I'll go tell Mr. French to call off the manhunt. You can explain to the kids how you weren't consulted. Look, um, you really didn't get sent away from your Aunt Jenny's house. Look, I know what you've been going through. No, I don't. Actually, I don't know a thing about you guys. Why don't you tell me what you've been going through? When we were living with Aunt Jenny and Uncle Doug, 
We tried to do what they said, but we'd always yell too loud or break something. And then Uncle Doug would get mad, and his forehead would get all scrunchy. <laughs> and he couldn't go driving in his camper because he had to stay home and look after us. We were in the way, and now we're in your way. And we broke Mr. French. Yeah, yeah, you pretty nearly did. And we burned up the kitchen. Not the whole thing. Why were you playing around in the microwave like that? We were trying to make soup for Mr. French so he wouldn't die. Oh. Oh, well, that was really thoughtful of you, trying to keep Mr. French alive. So where are you going to send us away to? I can't send you away. You're my brother's little boy. And you're his little girl. And you're all I have left of him. So I guess I'm gonna have to let you stay here. Oh. <laughs> but uh, don't say anything about this to Mr. French. Because we might break up again. <laughs> Into tiny little pieces. <laughs> you, Master Jody. For you, Miss Buffy. And for you, Mrs. Beasley. And per your request, low sodium soy sauce so you don't bloat. No, don't thank me. It's my job. I know, his name's French, but he's really English. French, I think you should know that Buffy and Jody are probably going to be with us a while longer. I see, sir. And have you worked out where they're going to be on a more permanent basis? Yeah, I pretty much have. Well, that's a relief, sir. I don't think we could have survived too many more days of this sort of pandemonium. Now, you'll get the hang of it. Why would one need to get the hang of it? God, we're keeping them. So, I read Destin the new lyrics I wrote, and at first he said it was very good. And then he starts saying I should skip the first verse because it's kind of slow and set up -y, and get straight to the second verse because that's where the money is. And I told him, I don't care where the money is. I care about the hurt the woman in the song is feeling. And he can't feel the hurt if you don't have a setup. So, we're keeping the first verse. I'm so glad. Sissy, we need to talk about your situation. Oh, it's okay. I worked it out. See, Destin's got room in his apartment, so I can move in there. He said it'll be strictly PG, separate beds and all, which is what all guys say, but it's okay, because I have had six weeks of karate. That's real good, honey, but this is a teenage boy. Unless you actually kill him, he won't stop. Please, Uncle Phil, let her stay here. Yeah, can't she stay here with us, please? He's letting you guys stay? Yeah, he said we could. <laughs> Mr. French, uh, I wonder if you might do something for me. Tomorrow, I'm going to want to take Buffy and Jody over to the zoo. And while I'm doing that, why don't you take Miss Sigourney here down to Macy's and help her pick out a bed and some sheets. Tell them to deliver it up here, and we'll put it in the study. The study? Oh, but, sir, the study is your sanctuary. It's where you keep your books and your... Sailing trophies and... <laughs> and now it'll be Sissy's room. 
Hey, Mr. French, after we buy the sheets, we can go get some chili dogs. Yes. Well, I suppose the golden years of order and dignity and vomit-free footwear had to end sometime. <laughs> What is it now? That, that is the exact same quilt we just bought. Well, imagine a city this size having two identical quilts. It's really quite extraordinary. Come along. But the one here costs $25 less. We could return that one and save $25. I don't want to save $25. I just want to be home and far away from chirpy sales girls. <laughs> you need a cup of tea. What? A cup of tea. That's what all English people need when they get tired and cranky, right? A spot of tea? Oh, very nice. Reduce me to an ethnographic stereotype. Thank you very much. I'm sorry. How come you always carry that umbrella? No reason. It's because you're English, isn't it? Yes. I use it to fly from the rooftops like Mary Poppins. Better not tell Buffy and Jody that. They'll make you back it up. Evening, Sydney. Next week, it's an all-new episode of the comedy critics call Clever, Smart, and Charming. <gasps> and in the coming weeks, it's time for the housework and the schoolwork. Mrs. Beasley falls from the roof, and a party will raise the roof. Dear God! An all-new family affair. <gasps> followed by the WB comedy premiere, Do Over. It's all next week on the WB Thursday night. The evil one. Next week on the WB Friday, Reba returns with all new episodes. You know, dentists are the firemen of the mouth. Yeah, that's why they get all the chicks. <laughs> the season premiere of Reba. Then, it's the series premiere of Greetings from Tucson. I wish this father and son moment could last forever. Oh, wait, it is. The new WB comedy, Greetings from Tucson, premieres right after the season premiere of Reba. Next week on the WB Friday night. Just one week away from the season premiere of Jamie